When I pull my trigger finger, oh you for Chris hit that. When I pull my my trigger finger, oh oh you for oh Chris. Here we go. Pull my trigger finger, oh For me, very interesting is the sound producer. Yes, it developed you into yeah, like like he says, next level. The way I see it is that when you beatbox acoustically, so just you, it sounds a certain way. You're in control of everything. It's down to you. Your sounds are your sounds. The things you've practiced, the routines, the music you've designed. When you beatbox acoustic, that's what comes out. When you're on stage, and when you're recording, this is just not the case. You have to make the sounds, they go through a wire, and then they come out of speakers. That going through a wire and coming out the speakers, it's changing everything. Someone else is in charge of how your sound comes out. Yeah. This is an art form in itself. And as beatboxers, it's so difficult, and I've had to deal with this for four years, it's probably the most difficult uh, musical creation that a sound engineer has to deal with. Because normally, in a band, you have drums, vocals, guitar, for example. These are separate. They're separate things. When you're beatboxing, everything is in one line, one microphone. There is no piece of equipment in the world designed to deal with everything. So this is very important now, and I want all of the beatboxers to listen to this. When you normally have, with a normal band, a normal situation, and what every other producer and sound engineer is used to, they expect you to have separate tracks for th different things. So you can have <laughs> Each thing, vocals, bass, and drums, they need different treatment. But with beatboxing, it's, it's all in one line. There is no piece of equipment in the world designed for this. Beatboxing is very unique and strange in this way. And as wonderful as that is, it's very, very difficult. And this is why many beatboxers, solo beatboxers, struggle to take it to the next level and have the same sound as a lot of the producers uh, that people love. And a lot of the musicians, the fully produced tunes, trying to sound like this. So the answer isn't doing it as layer, 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 because you can't. You can't treat everything differently. But what you can do is you can treat it moment by moment. So if I was to go, what you can do is you can create a perfect situation for a perfect EQ and situation for and a perfect EQ and situation for and what would happen in uh, but the producer or someone you meet or someone that inspires you or is interested in recording, they start trying to split everything. So again, not like this, not layers, but working on, working on, and working on, so that they have the things that you want in that moment. So you don't have the same thing for, because they're different sounds. You work on each moment having its unique and ideal EQ and compression. So again, no effects, no layers, just EQ and compression. And what I found with Lyndon J is exactly this. He's a very, very talented drummer. What this allows him to do, and like I mentioned, the each one having its own unique thing, he can do this, but he can do it live for my show. And he has a controller. So each controller, each button has its own designated sound. So one will be, again, no effects. When he hits it, if I'm not beatboxing, it sounds like this. You can't hear anything. But what it does is it opens a door for the best sound for a certain sound. But because he has spent so much time with him, we've done hundreds of shows, he knows my music inside out. And this is the next, 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 next level, is you find someone that you're so connected with that you're, as a beatboxer, if you're gonna go to the next level and you're gonna level up, you need to find someone that fits with you like this and they know your style, they know your decisions, and they know your tracks. So like, when I have my set music, like Move, 
um, or metal jaw, when I'm doing this, Linda knows it so well that he can make the EQ and everything perfect. And eventually, me and Paponi will be running massive battles where every beatboxer has their own sound engineer. And it will be sick. Looping, because there was also a looping battle this weekend. You think something like this has future with beatboxing? Yes. Yeah. So much. I enjoyed the looping so much. It's just, it allowed, it's another way for people to communicate and another way for people to get things across. And I think it has so much potential. And um, I think it's uh, Pancakes. Uh, Firebrass was telling me yesterday, he was like, oh, Reeps, um, Pancakes has found this glitch in the loop station and he found this uh, a bit in the programming of the actual machine that he could use to create an effect. And it's this kind of exploring that is typical of beatboxers. It takes a very open mind to try and understand something as much as possible. We all have mouths, we all have the same equipment, but we all manage to find again and again new ways of using it. The greatest thing I've learned recently and I think the most, one of the most powerful things I, I've, I've realized is that if you take something that is just a routine or what you think is just a routine or is any kind of beatbox idea, if you structure it like a song, it becomes a song. Yeah. And this is what we need more in beatboxing. Take your ideas that step further so there's a progression. It's not just a build up, a drop and the end. Like have structure, have uh, ideas. So the best examples of this is move. I did something that I, stylistically something I've been doing for two, three years, but it had an intro, it had a bridge, it had a chorus, it had this really defined structure. And as soon as I did that and put it out, it was on radio one. So it can be done. And certain beatboxers, a uh, certain beatboxer recently said, it can only ever be a sketch at best. I won't say who that is. And my argument for that is why can someone stand or sit in front of Wembley Arena, in front of 100,000 people with just their voice and a guitar, or in Bobby McFerrin's case, just his voice, and he can move people? Beatboxing is not a sketch, beatboxing is music. Beatboxing is a new thing, and there's very few chances in human life. This is quite epic. <laughs> there's very few chances in human life that you can find something that is yours. And we have found a new scene, a new art form, something that hasn't been done before in this way. And as a beatboxer, because it's new, people will not understand at first. They won't understand you at first. Your parents, your friends, if you really believe in it, they won't understand because they don't know because it hasn't been done yet. But this is so exciting. This is your chance to do something that has never been done. And obviously, there's that as well. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not